Ah, there's nothing like a great glass of wine to take the edge off an evening, but if you're new to wine, knowing where to start can be quite daunting. To the uninitiated, wine can seem snobbish, exclusive and mysterious, and to be honest, it's tempting just to stay away and avoid the risk of seeming uncultured. Well, it's a shabbily, of course. I'm getting vanilla and just a threat of oyster shell. Yeah, yeah. What are you getting? Smoky bacon. Overbearing aromas of pretentious rubbish. But there genuinely is a wine for all tastes. It just takes a bit of experimenting to find what you like. The best way to know more about wine is to try more wine. Majestic Wines has a tasting counter with six different wines to try for free each week. So if you wet five times, that's 30 different wines you've exposed yourself to. Many other wine retailers also offer tastings, and it's a great way to learn about different wines without having to buy tons of wines you don't actually like. Turns out, evaluations of wine aren't total BS. There's actually a systematic approach to wine tasting. You may be thinking, well, so what? The only thing that matters is, is whether I like the taste of it or not. I agree, but you'll also have a better chance of picking up wines you like if you can identify the characteristics of the wine that make you like it. So recently I've been preparing for my WSET Level 2 exam, and here's what I've learned about how to taste wine. So I have with me here a 2019 Chateau Racunia Bordeaux Superior, which cost me about £13 at Majestic. You can repeat this process with the cheapest Blanc in your supermarket or the most high-end fine wine. It makes no difference, the principle is exactly the same. So let's crack this baby open and have a try. I recommend if you have a full bodied red, especially a mature one of several years, leave the bottle open for an hour or two before you drink, or if you have a decanter to pour the wine into, even better. We call this aerating the wine, or letting it breathe. Basically, when the alcohol reacts with the oxygen in the air, it releases more of the subtler characteristics, which might initially be hidden by more intense primary flavours. You can also help the wine breathe by swirling the glass, like I'm doing here making a mess of my kitchen, increasing the surface of the wine that is exposed to the air. So the first thing you're going to look at is the appearance. Take a look at the top of the glass and see if you can see your fingers through the stem of the glass. If you can see your fingers very clearly, you have a light intensity. If you can sort of make out your fingers, then it's medium, and if it's practically opaque and all you can see is a liquid, you've got a deep colour. So the colour scale varies depending on the wine. If you're trying this with a white or a rosé, I'll leave the colour scales in the description for you. For red, we have purple, ruby, garnet or tawny. Most reds are ruby, in other words basically red. If there's a hint of blueness or purple to it, it's purple. If there's a hint of brown but still mainly red, it's garnet, and if it's more brown than red, it's tawny. As red wines age, they lose their colour, so you'd expect to see garnet and tawny on older wines. So in my case, I can kind of see my fingers and it's quite clearly red, so I'm going to say it's a medium ruby. Next up is the nose. If you can smell a lot of characteristics before you put your nose to the glass, it's pronounced. At the other end of the scale, if you stick your nostrils in the glass and barely pick up on anything, then it's a light intensity. I'll provide the full list of categories in the description, but when you're first starting to taste, it's useful to be as broad as possible. You might be able to identify a hint of black currant or black cherry, but the overarching category is black fruit. In my case, I'm getting hints of black fruit, possibly blackberry or a little bit of plum. Now, there's a lot of different factors which influence these aromas, such as the grape variety used, the climate it was made in, the winemaking process and how it was stored, so don't worry too much about that for now. You can look up the characteristics of different grape varieties. This wine is a blend of Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc and Carmenere, but the Merlot is a dominant part and that's where the blackberry flavour is coming from. You might be able to pick up on secondary aromas. If it's been aged in new oak, it might have a smoky or cedar hint to it. If it's very mature, you might be able to detect tertiary scents such as tobacco, mushrooms, dried fruit or leather. Again, I'll put the full list in the description for you to refer back to. In my case, I can kind of pick up on a little bit of smoke from aging in oak, but I'm not getting anything tertiary and for a wine that's only four years old, that's not surprising. So I'd say it's medium intensity black fruit, hints of blackberry, plum and smoke. Now for the best bit, the palate. Cheers. Take a good mouthful, swirl it around every corner of your mouth, try to get a little bit of air into your mouth, and give a little chewing motion with your mouth closed. So the first thing you want to pay attention to is sweetness. This ranges from dry, off dry, medium to sweet. If there's a hint of sweetness, it's probably either off dry or medium, and sweet and dry is pretty obvious. In my case, this wine is dry. Next up is acidity. The way to test this is tuck your head forwards and see how quickly your mouth fills up with saliva. If you find yourself having to swallow every few seconds to clear your mouth, it's high acidity. And the other end of the spectrum, if there's not much saliva, it's a low acidity. In my case, it's about 10 to 15 seconds before I need to swallow, so I'd say it's a medium acidity. Next is tannins. Tannins are what makes the roof of your mouth feel dry. When you touch your tongue above the back of your your front teeth, 
Can you feel your mouth drying? If it's super dry, then it's high tannin. If it's not really doing much, then it's low tannin. Yeah, mine's pretty middle of the road here, and I'd say there's a little bit of tannin, but it's not overbearing, so I'd give it a medium tannin. Now what we all came for, alcohol. You can measure this by the warm sensation you get in the back of your throat when you swallow the wine. If a wine is low in alcohol, below 11%, you won't get much of a warming sensation. Mediums classes between 11 and 14%, and you should feel a noticeable warming feeling in the back of the throat here. If it's above 14%, you should feel it putting some hairs on your chest, maybe even a slight burning sensation. In my case, it feels like a pretty potent burn, and just to confirm, on the bottle, the ABV is 14.5%. So it's high alcohol. So next is the body. This is the mouthfeel you get. Think of viscosity of something like cream or honey versus water. Alcohol and tannins are the biggest influence on this. So if something is high alcohol and high tannin, in most cases the body will be quite full. On the other end of the spectrum, a lower alcohol content with low tannins is likely to produce a lighter body wine. So in my case, it's quite a full body feel in the mouth. Next we have the flavour intensity. Again, just like the nose, if the flavour jumps out at you as soon as it's in your mouth and you can easily discern different characteristics, it's pronounced. At the other end of the scale, if you're really struggling to identify anything about it, it's probably light intensity. This feels pretty medium on the intensity. And with the flavour characteristics, it's quite similar to the nose. I can definitely pick up on the blackberry more than plum. So I say this wine is medium intensity black fruit with hints of blackberry. Last thing we're checking here is the finish. The finish is how long the good qualities of a wine linger in your mouth after you've swallowed it. If you've forgotten about something immediately after drinking it, it's a short finish. If it's still some taste after 30 seconds, it's medium. And if you can still taste it after a minute, then it has a long finish. In my case, I can still kind of taste it after 30 seconds, so I'm going to give it a medium finish. So we bring all of this together for the conclusion to evaluate the wine using Blick. That's balance, length, intensity, and complexity. You score each category with either 0, 0 0.5, or 1. With this score, you then grade a wine as either poor, acceptable, good, very good, or outstanding. So if it was across the board zeros, it's poor and to be outstanding, it should be getting a total score of 3.5 or 4. In my case, it's got a pretty good balance, with medium intensity, medium acidity and tannins, so I would give it a 1. The length is medium, so I'll give it a 0 0.5. Intensity, again, wasn't that full on, and it wasn't really hard to taste either, so I'll give it a 0 0.5. In terms of complexity, I could identify a handful of flavours, but not so many secondary or tertiary ones, so I'm going to give it a 0 0.5. So I've given it a total score of 2.5, which equates to good. No surprises there, from a reasonably priced wine. But now we've learned a systematic way to judge, we can pick out wines better suited to our needs. So there we have it. We've not even scratched the surface in terms of wine knowledge, but it gives you a good starting point from which to navigate. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button. See you soon!